Hey guys, welcome to our second video in our series on a crash course in Neo-Austrian economics. In this video, we're going to go through a simple uh, version of Garrison's model. Let's go. So this model has four equations. They are the loanable funds demand, the loanable funds supply, the PPF or the resource constraint in this context, and the Hayek triangle hypotenuse. From these equations, we can obtain equilibrium values, uh, that being for our interest rate, equilibrium investment, equilibrium consumption, uh, the total period of production, the average period of production, and gross domestic expenditures. We note that a restriction on this model is that Y bar, meaning our PPF or our resources, have to be greater than our investment, and that's just uh, a feasibility constraint. In terms of visualizing the model, uh, we go and we draw the following graph. Oftentimes people go and see these graphs first, but for me personally, seeing the math first and then seeing the graphs make things a little bit more clear. So we want to always have this set up in mind. I just took this image uh, from the paper itself, and I think it is really interesting. Let's now shock it a little bit. So in terms of comparative statics, with some simple derivatives, we can illustrate some key economic relationships. In the paper, the authors consider how a shift in time preferences embodied by B impacts the model. So obviously, um, with an increase in B, we're going to see a fall in interest rate, an increase in our equilibrium amount of investment, and a fall in our equilibrium amount of consumption. And these move uh, proportionally to each other. So if we see an increase in investment, we'll see a proportional decrease in consumption we'll see a lengthening of our average period of production. And this is different from uh, what the authors say, right? They go and they, for both of these, they go and they describe them as ambiguous. But um, what I'm saying is that uh, A is going to has to be greater than B. And this is just simply because um, if you just go and look at your simple supply and demand chart here, um, this here, that's good. That's a okay. However, um, if we have a situation where B is greater than A, right, we might end up with something like that. And uh, we don't have an equilibrium, so it's not really particularly interesting. Or if we do have an equilibrium, it's going to be you know somewhere over here. So th that's not particularly uh, very interesting. So I'm just putting that restriction on there. And um, the, funnily enough, they actually go and show it uh, in the graphical representation that we will go and see on the next slide. So the way this works is that we first start down here at the bottom because this is where our shock is going and entering. Move up to our PPF and we then look at our Hayek triangle, which goes and gives us information about the period of production. So we see a increase in our supply of loanable funds as a result of our increase in time preference. And that goes and drops our interest rate down. We go and we see a fall there. Um, that goes and increases our investment overall. And that investment in turn goes and lengthens uh, our period of production. So we're moving from here to here. So, um, this is the basic model, the basic you know, workhorse. We're going to go and get into uh, more complicated models where uh, we have you know, a little bit more of a curvy PPF and have a law of motion of capital. Uh, I will see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care.